and this is a competitive skirmish game where players are playing the role of a guild master and you're going to be growing your guild, building armories, gaining new mercenaries, and then sending them out on missions to gain rewards to further grow your guild. And this is a scenario based game that will have a whole bunch of different scenarios that you can choose from when setting up your game, but you're going to be choosing those scenarios from an app which is going to allow them to add more scenarios in the future. Each player starts the game out with a mercenary card to add to their guild and each mercenary is going to have their own different set of stats, strengths and weaknesses as well as a special ability and a slot to add two additional weapons. And if your mercenary is skilled in arcane magic you'll also be able to gain an arcane card that will slide into the side of your card and you'll be able to use mana later in the game in order to activate your magical abilities. And the game plays over a series of rounds, each with two phases, where players are going to be taking turns performing their actions. And the first phase is the strategy phase. And this is going to allow players to move their units, channel their mana, use mana, or even use ranged weapons. But something that's interesting about this game is that you'll also be spending movement points in order to rotate your unit, and the way that they're facing also does matter at various points in the game. If you can attack another player with a ranged weapon, you're going to be checking your mercenary card to see how many dice you can roll. And if you roll an attack value higher than your opponent defense then you will inflict a hit. Each character is going to have an armor value and then a health value and some attacks will break their armor before damaging their health but other attacks can bypass their armor and attack their health directly. Another interesting aspect of this game is that if you didn't hit your opponent, your projectile is still going to go somewhere, so you're going to be rolling a die to see which direction it goes, and it could potentially hit another unit or even one of your own units. But instead of attacking a player, you can instead choose to channel your mana, and to do this you're going to be rolling dice in order to gain mana, and there's a few different icons that can show up when you're rolling those dice. Some will add mana to your pool, but there's always a chance of rolling broken seals, and if you roll too many of those, your character is going to go mad. And if this does happen, your character goes mad for the rest of the game and you'll no longer be able to have control over their movement. And instead they're going to move similar to a missed projectile where you're going to be rolling a die to figure out which direction they're going to move. After that, they're going to be using their arcane power to cast a really powerful negative effect to anyone that's in their vicinity, whether it's your team or not. Then they're always going to lose HP at the end of their turn until they eventually die. But if channeling mana sounds a little too dangerous for you and you have some stocked up, you can always spend your mana in order to summon a demon. And to do this, you're going to remove the card that you slid into your mercenary card, and it's going to reveal which demon that you are able to control, and then that's going to add another unit onto the map that's going to work similar to your mercenaries. The only catch here is that if your mercenary dies, anything that you summoned will also die with your mercenary. And that's everything for the strategy phase, but then we move into the brawl phase, and this phase is very similar. The only difference here is there's going to be more of a focus on your melee characters. Players will be able to spend whatever movement points they have remaining to move their melee characters, and this is where the orientation of your characters really comes into play, because when you're attacking with hand-to-hand -hand weapons, if you flank your enemy from the side, you're going to gain an additional attack die, or if you're attacking a single unit with multiple units, then you're going to gain an additional die for each of your additional units. And then the rounds are going to continue like this until the end of the game is triggered depending on the requirements of the individual scenario and then the player or players that was able to fulfill the win condition of the mission is going to be the one to win the game. 